Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad. Wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam ala ba'i la habati filah. Continue on in our study of Imam Muqbil bin Hadi al Wadi's uh, Risala. Had he da'u tana wa aqeedu tana. This is our da'wa, our, our uh, call, and this is our aqeedah, our creed. We reach the portion of the treaties, which is very important, although we'll be brief, as they are, as the call for prayer is beginning. And before we get into this mas'ala, and we'll be as quick as possible, I wanted to mention some of the other uh, evidences with regards to using stories and falsified narrations on the Prophet وسلم, and stories uh, that could contain shirk. That this is the uh, way of the Hizbiya, uh, of the Hizbiyun, of the people who call the partisanship and the other groups of Ahl Bidah. And Imam Muqb, uh, it was related <coughs> to one who explained this. He said, Well, I had a hadith kathira to do the Allah and the Da'i in Allah, he young Bari and Yathkar and Nasbil Qurani was Sunnah. For that Kirbil Qurani, many a half who were That the person who's calling to Allah. It's imperative that they use uh, verses of the Quran and a hadith of the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and they mention that to the people. That they use this. This is how they call the people to Islam or to learning more about their their religion. And then he mentioned the ayat where Allah subhanahu wa taala says. And you know, remind them or remind with the Quran for whoever fear fears uh, the punishment, letting us know that the Quran is full of reminders for us about the torment that we could face if we are disobedient to Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala, and if we die upon shirk or kufr or zandaka. And that the Sunnah as well, the Sunnah of the Prophet also reminds us, and we should also beware of this minhaj of, of Ahl Bidah, who uses the weak narrations, because it's possible that a person may fall into the hadith that we already mentioned, and, and here's another narr uh, narration of it. Where the Prophet said, Men qala aliyya ma lam aqul fal yattabawwa'u maq'aduhu min al nar. So in the hadith of Salama, the Prophet said, Whoever speaks uh, about me or says something about me which I did not say, then he will take his seat in the hellfire. So that's enough of a warning, a severe uh, warning about a severe punishment for the person who uses false narrations and especially if they lie about the Prophet and they know something is fabricated or they, uh, on him and they, they lie on the message of Allah So it's very important to use uh, sound evidence. And the last ibarah related to that, and then we'll go into the next issue, وَقَدْ ذَكَرَ أَهْلَ الْعِلْمِ أَنَّ الْأَهْلَ الْبِدَعَ لَا يَحْتَمُونَ بِتَمِيذ الصَّحِيمِ مِنَ الصَّقِيمِ فَكُونَ عَلَى هَذَرْ مِنْ طَرِيكِهِمْ That Ahl al meaning the ulama, they mention that the way of Ahl al-Bid'ah, this is like, uh, you could say, a, a, a part of 
the minhaj in general of many of the groups from Ahl al-Bid'ah is that they don't distinguish between uh, sound evidence and weak evidence. They don't, you know, they don't give uh, precedence to the Hadith sciences. And so it's imperative to avoid following their way. To avoid following their way and not giving precedence to this uh, important science. I think because the next issue is so important that we'll stop there and we'll keep it short. The next issue, or we'll just introduce it very briefly. The Shaykh said, The Shaykh then said, We don't uh, make takfir of a Muslim for his sin, his or her sin, except shirk, associating partners or polytheism with Allah, the Almighty. So this is a very important kind of, we'll, we'll very briefly touch on the issue of takfir. We, we've talked about it more in detail in Nawaqid al-Islam and many of the other uh, durus that we've done. So there's no need to go into depth about it, but I just want to bring some of the speech of what the Imam said in some of his other books and some of the adilla from some of the a'imma related to this issue of making takfir. Because this is something that we unfortunately have to deal with in this day and age that it, it's become widespread that amongst Muslims there are a group of Muslims that declare others to not be uh, legitimate Muslims or to be Muslims at all and decree them to be disbelievers without the right to do so, without the knowledge to do so and wrongly accusing them, often just because they differ with them. This is the menhaj of the methodology of the first sect, uh, one of the first early sects in Islam, the Khawarij, who used to make takfir or declare other Muslims to be disbelievers due to their major sins. And this is what we have now. Now we have groups, whole groups of people who have come together on the minhaj of the Khawarij, making takfir of the leaders, making takfir of, you know, all the leaders without exception. Uh, all the, uh, you know, the ulama, especially if they have any fatwa that disagrees with them and disagrees with making suicide bombings and all these other uh, forms of bid'ah that these groups hold to be a part of the deen. So we'll talk a bit about that in the next sitting. And we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala Nabiya Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam.